Hi everyone, this is Nikki Rowland and today I am guest designing for Paige Evans using some of her cut files and I'm also using the Scenic Root collection. Um, I'm using the Snow Cute cut file today for this layout. I have another layout and a mini book too, so make sure you check those out as well. But uh, for this layout in particular, I'm just using the one cut file and I'm using Snow Cute. I've cut it in white and I'm gonna back it um, onto that blue paper from the Go The Scenic Root collection. Um, I've already um, taken a photo, printed a photo, um, and trimmed it to the size of the O in Snow Cute. Um, so that is gonna be the only photo on this layout that's very tiny for me. Normally I would have others and I would normally have them on top of the cut file rather than um, behind it. Um, backed in this way but it's a very cute photo and it works really really well so I thought I'd go for it and see see how it turned out. Um, so uh, you can see that I've just as I say cut the snow cute cut file in white and then I have cut the outline only um, in the blue paper so um, I've backfilled it all in one big piece. Um, and now what I'm doing is I'm creating um, stitching holes. Um, I'm doing that manually with my paper piercing tool and mat um, and uh, I'm going, my plan is to stitch around the letters. Um, so I put out all the blue tones I have of embroidery floss uh, to, de uh, to decide which colour to use but in the end um, I just go for white and I stick with just white. I did think about doing different colours um, but I just didn't want to detract from the cut file. It's quite busy with um, lots of bits of the snowflake going on um, so I didn't want to confuse the eye by having lots of different things going on on the cut file. So I've stuck with white and I'm just stitching, back stitching around each letter. Um, I did consider doing the whole snowflake, um, but um, I wasn't actually overly happy with how my stitching looked. I think it was because it's white stitching over a dark paper and therefore you can see the blue shining through a little bit um, and therefore it doesn't give such a smooth line. Um, so um, I decided to um, just stick with the letters um, and uh, leave the background of the blue snowflake as it was. Um, so um, I'm here I am now um, having stitched my letters um, and I now need to create a background uh, for my big snowflake to go on to. So I have cut the snow cute cut file three more times um, in the smaller size. Um, and I've also cut the outline only many, many times in lots of different sizes. So I've got some big ones and little ones and tiny ones and medium sized ones, um, as well as the three big um, snow cute um, cut files. Um, sorry, it's my little little two year old um, helping. Um, and uh, I've cut them, I say, I've, I'm now going to stick them all over the white background um, to uh, create um, an interesting background for my snow cute cut file to sit on. Um, so um, I'm also going to put a border around this layout. So um, that piece um, that you can see there around the edge, the green piece, is actually the other side of the blue. Um, so I did toy with whether I should do blue or green, but as I have got, uh, well, by the end of this layout, I will have green and blue tones um, in this layout. Um, I didn't want to just stick to just the dark blue because it it's, even though that's how I would that colour scheme would go really well with snow photos. Um, I want more variety than that. So I thought I'd bring in the green, and the blues and greens together always look fabulous. Um, so I thought I'd bring that in um, and uh, give the border um, around the edge of my layout um, a green tone instead of the dark blue. Um, so now I'm just going around sticking in all of those snowflakes, um, and then I've got some coming off of the edges, as you can see there, and I'm going to trim those down um, just using a pair of scissors. So I just I prefer it when you have um, a pattern like this, a random pattern like this. I prefer for some of the items to be falling off of the edge of the page. I just think it makes it look more natural um, rather than try to get all the pieces um, inside the um, four edges of the layout. Um, so there I am just going around trimming those off super easy um, and uh, yeah, all good. And now I can stick that onto my background or my border. Um, so, so I've already used the middle of that paper um, by cutting out the big snowflake. So now it's just a case of utilizing the other piece of that paper. There's nothing else I can do with it really, apart from using it as a background. I could cut, fussy cut out a couple of those birds, but um, really no, um, not a lot. Um, so therefore it's really only good for a border, but I do like to use everything that I've got. I don't like to waste stuff. Um, so, um, that's being used as a border there makes me happy. 
Okay, so I've got my green border, I've got my large um, snowflake cut file ready to be stuck on. I've got fabulous snowflakes all over the background of my white layout. Um, and now I can get this stuck on. So I'm just gonna raise it up on foam pads. Um, and uh, that's a bit of a labor of love because I use tiny ones. I should really invest in some of that foam stuff that you can cut into big sheets. Um, but uh, I've never done it. I've always just used square, small square foam pads. Maybe I should just buy some bigger foam pads. That might work. <laughs> I'll have a look next time I order some. Um, but uh, yeah, right. So there is my um, my large snow cute cut file going onto the background. And I'm really happy with how that's looking. I love the fact that there's something going on in the white background as well with the different textures. Now, where it's where I've got the three little snow cute cut files cut, you can't really read them because um, they're hidden under the... Um, large snowflake but the point was just to have some texture on the background to have some different um prongs poking out of, of snowflakes and their things so it wasn't supposed to they weren't supposed to be red they were supposed to, it was supposed to look like a background so that is what i've done okay so now get to do the fun part which is all the embellishments so i'm going through the go the scenic route collection and uh, pulling out all the blues and greens and um, there's quite a lot of them it's a really lovely color they're, they are really lovely colors um, within this collection um, of course it screams bright pink doesn't it this collection but um, there are a number of other colors in there as well um, and I say lots and lots of these blues and greens so I just went through and pulled all the pieces out um, that would work so I've got the ephemera I went through the um, puffy stickers the chipboard um, and did I say the ephemera? I think I did. <laughs> um, and uh, enamel dots as well. So um, quite a few bits and pieces there that I've just literally anything blue or green I've just pulled out and put onto the layout um, and I can um, go from there and decide what's going to make the cut and what isn't and can go back uh, in with the others. Um, so um, down the bottom there um, I've already got a puffy Polaroid frame, a chipboard Polaroid frame, two chipboard hearts um, and then I just wanted to add some more bits. So I've now just added a um, lovely like mandala um, foiled blue um, piece of ephemera behind the Polaroid frame. And then I've got a label sticking out to the right. Um, and I'm now adding in um, those blue hearts from the sticker sheet. Um, I'm raising those all up on foam pads um, just to give them a bit of dimension. But they're really lovely. They're kind of, they're kind of mirrored. I guess they're foiled, um, but... Yeah, they're definitely foiled, um, but uh, they, they're they so shiny um, and they're blue rather than like gold or silver, which is what I would normally expect foiling to be in. Um, so um, I kind of thought they were like just mirrored, but anyway, really, really lovely. I suppose that's what foiling is, isn't it, mirrored? Um, <laughs> at the top there, um, I've got um, a blue ticket that says every day is amazing. Um, I've got another foiled mandala underneath um, there. I've put some flowers behind the um, cut file poking out. I've then got that large journaling spot there that has a bird on it and I've just trimmed that down and, and popped that under the cut file too. Um, so I'm just making sure everything is stuck down and still looking for more bits and pieces. Of course, I pulled out the ephemera but um, I couldn't pull out all the stickers um, because they would stick to things. <laughs> so they had to stay on the sticker sheet and on the puffy uh, sticker sheet until I was ready. Um, but uh, ca carrying on, um, sticking bits and pieces in and testing things out and figuring out what, what can go where. Um, just another little puffy heart has just gone up up there. Um, I just, um, I was really following the diagonal line of the cut file um, with the embellishments top left and bottom right. Um, and then I just have my little photo in the middle there. So I just put a couple of hearts um, next to my photo. Um, on the sticker sheet, there's a number of um, <clears throat> blue phrase, phrases. Um, so I'm just popping those in where I can. Some of them are a little thicker than I thought they were, um, so I've just trimmed some down. But um, that one at the top there says beautiful moments. Um, and um, yeah, I've got some others that are going to um, be added in a moment. Oh, I've just added a chipboard um, flower uh, down the bottom there. Um, and then um, more labels coming up now. So that one next to the photo says smile wide. And then I've just added one at the bottom of the word cute that says perfect. Um, and there's a blue heart there as well. Um, and um, yeah, just going to uh, keep going and keep 
making everything, uh, get everything stuck in place really. Oh, perfect. That's it. That's it. That's going to go there. Um, so uh, yeah, and, and those two stickers, those um, like phrase stickers I've raised up on foam pads. Um, I know they're flat stickers, but um, I just carefully put some foam pads on the back and then they stand out then. Um, so uh, that's always nice. Um, yeah, so just adding in some enamel dots now. I've got that whole pack of really uh, cute um, enamel dots. They've got lots of different things on them. They're not just normal enamel dots. They've got they're different shapes for a start. There's flowers and hearts and circles. Um, and uh, they've also kind of got some like glitter in them. Um, and uh, yeah, re really cute. Um, so I'm now just adding in some twiddles of silver thread. <clears throat> quite often use gold but silver I think goes better with this color scheme so uh, just a few um, I just wrapped around a few uh, ro uh, circles of this silver we are memory keepers thread and just just tuck that under my embellishment clusters so I literally kind of like lift them up um, and put the thread underneath and then put them back down um, I use tape to secure them in place as well um, I've put two in that bottom section and then I'm going to put one um, in the top section as well um, it just felt on the bottom that um the cluster was a bit too heavily weighted over onto the right hand side so it needed something to come out to the left as well so that's why I put an extra um, twiddle of uh, silver thread uh, down there as well. <clears throat> okay so now I'm just going to finish off with a few last minute details. Um, so I have these really cute little um, uh, they're kind of like resin shapes um, and uh, they're in a rainbow mix but um, I just pulled out the blues and the whites and I've just sprinkled those um, over the layout um, and uh, got those stuck in place. Um, I'm also going to add um, a few sequins as well because I think every layout needs a bit of sparkle and uh, I love um, putting sequins on my layout. Um, so I'm just going through my stash now and trying to find the uh, set that I um, really want to use. I know I've got it somewhere, I just have to find it. Uh, I think it's called Winter's Mist, That's it. I'm just uh, sprinkling it there. Um, so it has um, different sh uh, shapes and sizes of sequins, different colours, um, but all in blue colourways and silvers and whites. Also some snowflake uh, shaped sequins too. So those with the little resin shapes as well, <clears throat> really cool. Um, so just going to get all of those stuck in place now. I use a paper piercing tool and my glossy accents uh, to move the sequin out of the way, apply some glue and then move the sequin back into position. Uh, so that is uh, what I'm doing there. It doesn't take that long actually. I always think, oh my goodness, I'm going to be here forever doing this sticking of this um, of these sequins. Uh, but it's always surprisingly quick really. You just have to <laughs> get on with it and do it and it, it doesn't take very long at all really. Um, so uh, just getting all of those stuck in place now and a uh, quick shake of the layout to make sure there's none, no rogue sequins that have uh, avoided my glue. Um, and uh, I think that I'm done. Oh, there was a sequin that avoided my glue, so I'm just going to stick that one down. Didn't want it to get away. Um, and that's it. I am finished. Um, so thank you very, very much for joining me today. I hope you have enjoyed this layout. Um, I really loved making it. I love how it turned out. Um, and I uh, enjoyed using the cut file. So thank you very much to Paige Evans for having me. Uh, thank you so much for watching me. That was Nikki Boland, guest designing for Paige Evans. <laughs>